Okay, so now that's had a bit of time to dry, and again, this only had about half an hour or so. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights to it. Um, and for that, I'm using a slightly smaller um, adapter to my Microrama Beef Lock 50 um, static, which gives me an extension wire and a, a smaller local um, hopper to allow local placement of the static. Now, the beef lock's not the cheapest um, system in the world, but then I do this all the time. So, other ways of doing the same thing and getting a big hopper to work in a localised area, well, um, that is the East Group's um, progress applicator that was left to us by Karina. Um, I have made one alteration to it, and that's put a finer mesh in um, to allow us to use one mil um, static with it. But there's a method of getting local placement. You can see what has happened there is that we've taken a um, full lid, drilled a hole in it, and then added some mesh behind it. So what that gives you is the ability to locally place where you want your static to go. Um, normally I do them with about a 10 mil hole in, so you've got very accurate um, placement. Um, you could also do that by taking your standard grid and just cutting a disc out of plastic card with a small hole in. Um, and that then allows you to um, finally place where you're able to put your static. Um, the other thing, of course, is to make sure that you only put glue where you want your highlights, um, which is the other reason for this dot and dab method, um, because now what I can do is, with a bit of glue, um, what I'm doing is I want a little sort of barrier zone or transition zone between where we're going to put the hedges and the... Um, the normal bit of grass field. Um, you can see also here we've got quite a step in here. So again, I want to um, transition that with some highlights just so that we can, uh, it's not quite an obvious step. And finally, I want some little bits and pieces around the drainage ditches because like we had darker soil there, you always get a bit more growth just where these places are and maybe a little bit around and the reason for not sticking that in yet is that we can take it out and we can get some glue right up to the edge there and there and maybe even at the front okay back's going to be disguised a little but yeah so what we've got there is various bits of sort of places we want highlighted with a bit of a deeper grass. So what I've got in here is some, again, we're still two mil. Um, I've got some Microrama um, Magiflock. Um, this is their pastured green color. There's the pack. Um, and I've also got some of the beigey color in there. Same stuff, um, Magiflock from Microrama. But plenty of people will give you um, various colors. Um, and then we've got another one, which is a mix of the Microrama Beige and some War World Scenics 2 mil Winter. Just gives us a bit of variation. And I'm just going to pop those over the top here before the glue goes. Okay, so. really it's kind of one of these that you're probably not going to see until you blow away the rest of it here we go okay and then we'll do the same with some of the beige which will be a little bit more obvious Still got a bit of glue there. And what I'm looking for is little sort of 
patches just to give us a bit of a highlight. So hopefully you can see that. We'll again put a few more detailed photos up um, once we've uh, managed to get them taken. But um, effectively, what we're it's just about building up that texture and building up those bits and pieces of static. Um, and one last thing I'm going to do, and that is to put another um, bit of or layer of hay over that um, hay field. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more of the lighter stuff just to give us a bit more variation as we're building it up. Because then the darker stuff is um, underneath and the lighter stuff is because it's bleached in the sunshine over the top. So we need some more of that. So this is still two mil, haven't moved to the four mil really yet at all. Um, and again, it's a case of, I'm gonna leave this in place this time, purely because we've still got some um, glue wet here. So the, um, the beige will stick to it if I um, put static onto it. The other thing I'm going to do is bring the um, mask into the field a little bit because you quite often get on the outside of a field just a slightly less well grown bit of um, crop. So again it's about giving us a believable transition for want of a better phrase. So again we're there, that's there. So leaving the paper in place, which is going to stick some static to it, but there we go. So nice static paper, but hey ho. And you can start to see the little boundary that we're looking at creating there. Okay. So. That to me is just a little bit stark, so what I'm going to do is take the brush, we could probably do this with various sort of uh, additional coats, but just a dab of the brush gets rid of that really stark edge. Um, and uh, sort of it still gives us that transition boundary. So there we go, next thing is we will, in fact, we can pop that back in now as well. Give you an idea of how that's starting to look. And uh, next up, it's going to be the uh, the hedges and the trees. Okay, so here we are next morning, um, mainly because of when we started filming it. Um, next thing we need to do is put some fence posts in and get these hedges in. So I'm going to start with a gate post. I've got, I think it's a 1.2 drill in there, and my fence posts, if you can see, are um, one mil square plastic um, plastrut section that has just been painted in a sort of dark browny green. Um, and so we're just going to drill straight in. down maybe about four or five mil so I'll make my fence posts a little bit over long and we just need a little bit of super glue on the end there's a quick tip for you leave the drill in and then you know where the hole is and so pop a bit of glue on the end I'm using super glue here for speed um, but actually PVA will work just as well And in goes the fence post. So just got to make sure it's vertical from as many planes as we can look at it. 
And there we go. Next one in will be there. So again, I'm just drilling down. Leave the drill in. Dab of super glue on the end. Take the drill out so you don't lose the hole position. And there we go. Okay, so next thing we need to do is a couple of fence posts in here. So. another three in total just make this a nice little feature okay Last one, a little bit closer, but not to worry. In my fence post jar, I do actually have a jig to space these out. So I could have used that to get them nice and even, but this will do. Okay, so there's our fences in. So, just going to pop a bit of scatter and some weeds along that fence line. Because you always see this. This is where my blended turf comes in useful again. So it's always the first one I go to in this situation. And so what we're doing is and while we're there, I've got some spray on the road now, which darkens it out a little bit, which is something to always remember when you choose your colour of grout. Because you always get a growth of weeds under a fence line. Well, that should do us. So now we'll add a few more bits and pieces. First thing I'm going to do is gently spray that to fix it. Okay, then we're going to get some Woodland Scenic Weeds. There we go. And the other reason I like to put them out with these is that they kind of fall quite naturally which gives you little 
pockets that actually look quite natural. Okay, I'm going to pop a little bit over here also. We will come back to this once we've put some hedges on. But, uh, okay, that'll do us. Right, so now we can get some undergrowth going. So the first thing I actually want to do is plant a tree. So, I'll pop that out of the way. So this is sea moss, um, available from various places. I tend to get most of mine from Green Scenes, which is now Squires. Um, but Warworld, Warworld Scenics and various others sell it. You can also get it off of eBay and various places like that. Um, I almost always buy the large, regardless. You'll see why in a minute. Um, so what I'm doing to start with is picking out the little seed pods just because they tend to look a bit bizarre as part of a tree, if you see what I mean. So just it's getting rid of them so that they don't show up in the eventual That'll do us. Okay, now this is a bit big for what I want as well. So um, I'm basically going to split it about there. Um, just like that. Okay, that gives me the size of the kind of tree that I'm after. Um, the rest won't be wasted. We use that either as another tree or as a, um, a bit of general shrubbery, whatever. Um, also, normally, if I'd got more time, I would paint this bark in some bark paint. Um, green seems to do a flexible bark paste that I really like. Um, it really stiffens them up because they're a bit fragile and don't really stand a knock very well. But um, right now, I don't actually have the time to do that. So, first thing we're going to do is get ready with the static grass. And I'm taking some. Let me get the grass up again, right? Okay. Just a little mixture of two mil War World Scenic Summer and some two mil. Um, Magi flock from Microrama Green Pasture and a touch of Spring Green from Warworld Phoenix as well just to give us slightly lighter colour. So now you don't have to do this, you can go straight in with the um, the foliage flock if you so like, so desire. Me I think it looks better with some additional static grass on first so what we'll do is get that one on okay now here our little rail not so good so what I'm going to do is attach a pair of spring tweezers onto it and then clip onto the spring tweezers and I can then hold the whole thing with the tweezers and not get uh, my fingers covered in hairspray so Back to the hairspray, a nice good dousing. Okay, and then on with some static grass. You need to make sure you get a reasonable coverage if you're going to do this, I think. But again, you know, experimenting with various. Uh, different ways of doing it. Always a good plan. So that'll do us for that one. Okay and in fact might as well leave it on there just stand it up and we'll deal with the static grass. Okay there we go. 
So next we're just going to put a bit of flock on. Um, and for this one I'm going to use some... Footpath Scenics Medium Green. Okay, and again, I have a box full of various different colours of um, flock just to give me variation in the trees. So, another layer of hairspray. And this does two things. Firstly, it makes it sticky for the flock, but secondly, it fixes those um, static hairs in place. So, then doing this over the box so we save as much as possible, we just Add in some flock onto that. Try to keep as much of it on the actual tree or in the box as possible. Okay, now at some point you reach a um, saturation point of the flock sticking, at which point it's time for some more hairspray. You'll also find that the colours change as you hairspray them, um, which you might have noticed with the um, grout on the road just a few minutes ago as well. So, last thing we need to do is actually plant this. And I want it over in the back here, so somewhere around there. So again, same drill. I'm going to make a slightly deeper hole this time. And I'm actually going to widen it out a little bit. Because I can't be bothered to get a bigger drill. Okay, nice reasonable size hole. This time I'm going to put my super glue in the hole because then that allows me to nice and gently plant in the tree there we go okay takes a little while for the uh, super glue to hold got a little bit of spray that will encourage that if we need it but it's uh, out in the toolbox and not here so what we'll do to push on is put a bit of there we go right so I've got one more little bit of um, sea moss to actually play with there so We'll do the same again. So on with the flock. And this time, because I'm using my um, pliers to, uh, or tweezers rather, to hold up to what's it, we'll do that. And just stick straight to the bottom. There we go. A little bit of green flock. Now again, for variation, I could leave these um, with just the flock. But uh, in this case, I'm going to put some slightly different coloured, maybe a bit lighter, yeah, we'll go with a bramble this time. So this is a Green Scenes Bramble. Um, and again, it's just get some hairspray on. And again, there's no reason why you couldn't use some brown static 
um, grass to start with. Uh, and there we go, hopefully that picks up. So a little bit of hairspray just to hold it all in place. Get the drill, and I'm going to put this one a little bit further in. Because in my experience it's quite rare, unless you've got a feature tree, um, you know, an oak tree middle of a field or something like that, it's quite rare to see just one tree on its own. You quite often have little saplings or bits and pieces next to it, um, even of a different type of tree. So, there we go. You probably can't see this, but I'm just dropping in some super glue into that hole. And then it's just simply a case of drop that into the hole, position it where we're happy with. And the beauty of these things is they quite often stick to each other. So there we go. That's what we're starting to look at. So I'll turn that round so you can maybe get a glimpse of what, where and how. Okay, now from that side it still looks pretty bare, but we'll sort that in the next bit. And then the first thing we need to do is clean up the tweezers from all of the flock. Right, so. <clears throat> One advantage of our leaving this overnight is that these will be nice and dry now, so I should be able to peel them off quite easily. So I'm going to start with this one at the far end and basically there you go I'm just peeling back and you quite often get a sort of mat of flock grass whatever I mean that can be used tear it up make bits and pieces of, of what's it for of, of foliage for it but you can see the underside of that I can now pop some glue on there and I can get it in underneath here to effectively disguise my trunks okay so what i am going to have to do is just chop it down a little bit so if that turns out to be the case it's just quite simply down the middle with some scissors and then i'm just teasing it out so we haven't got a straight edge okay so that's a bit better yeah that's a bit better it's going to look fine so now all we do is Grab some more PVA. That one? Maybe we'll use that one actually. Yeah, that actually looks better. So, grabbing some PVA, and because we put the PVA on the baking tray, I've got a reasonable piece of glue to glue to. And we can just fire that under there like so and then I'm, all I'm going to do is get my tweezers and um, I think it's known in the in the um, scenic circles as burnish it so what I'm trying to do is make sure that none of those little bits of, of glued paper are visible by pushing them down so I don't know if you can see that but we've already got a reasonable bit of hedge there Okay, so next thing we need is a little bit at the back and then a little bit round the front side as well. So I'm going to chop our bit to that. Use this bit in there. So again, just a bit of glue. Nice generous dog of glue on there. And just slide it in. Okay, now, if you can see, there is a bit of edge that needs what they call burnishing. So all I'm going to do there is get the tweezers in and push it right down so that it doesn't stick up artificially looking, for want of a better phrase. Okay. We'll cover some of it with hedge anyway, so I'm not too worried. But it's just to sort of try and make sure that we get all of those little edges right down and stuck so they don't stick out. Okay, so 
we've got a little bit of undergrowth there, so what we'll need to do is pop another bit across the edge here. So yeah, that's a good shape for that, so we'll stick that in. And the other thing about these is that once you've stuck them down and they've held fast, you can actually tease them about a bit if you find that you've got a little bit of a gap somewhere. Okay, so again, that's just making sure it holds. Okay, so that hides our trunk on all three sides, which makes a big difference already. So, next thing we want to do is get some hedging around this bit. So, let's pick in one that's about the right size. So, let me take that one. So, this is our horse hair one. Okay. And again, you can see how much has come up with that. Now, I'm, I'm, in some situations, I might go with that and just leave it. In this instance, I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is take a wavy cut and get rid of it. Okay. And that then will give us a bit of hedge that will sit just there nicely, I think. So, again, spodge of glue. And hedge in the middle of the what's with it verge, and then it's just about burnishing these little bits down so that they don't stick up horribly. Okay. And sometimes you need to come back to that as the glue's set in as well. But effectively, we've got. A reasonable enough looking hedge there. I think I might just smudge it around a bit. There we go. Okay. So then the next bit will be more horse hair. Okay, there we go. And might be just a oh no, might just fit there. Yeah, possibly so. A bit long for there, so I think yeah, probably there is a good place for it. So and again I'm really not too worried if any of the edges do stick out a little bit because we're going to go over this with some weeds fairly shortly. So it's really just about making sure we've got a decent hold on that. So there we go. Last couple of bits. Here comes the grass. And again, you can see how useful that would be. So I'll just tear off those bits so we've got a reasonable size. And maybe around here somewhere. Yeah, I think that's going to look all right. And maybe, well, actually, it might be better there. Yeah, will be. Just because it seems to have a natural L shape to match that corner. So we'll just stick it in there. Burnish down the edges. Okay, so we just need a couple more bits, Maybe one of them, and again this is another lichen one, so again you can see how that's come out with a nice bit of um, structure to it, and I don't like this little bit hanging off so I'm simply going to chop it off and we'll not lose that we'll save that okay so I'll just get a bit of glue on our glued bottom and get this right in and I'm looking for exactly that just to, to cover the um, bit of the fence post 
as hedges would. 